Um, today I wanted to show y'all the cookie decorating video I was talking about. I'm so sorry. I'm falling down here. <laughs> I talked to y'all about doing a decorating video with a Bible verse or like a special inspirational saying and I sent out a question on my stories last week about what y'all wanted to see and today this is that video. So I'm going to be showing you how to make a beautiful cookie with this pattern on it. And it's going to have a little verse or saying, and I'm going to show you how to write on the cookies. Um, so first, I'm going to show you how I mix. Hey, Leah. I'm going to show you how I mix my icing. So I've got my handy-dandy little ice cream scoop here. And I know y'all can only see half of my face, so I'm just going to lean down and wave at you. <laughs> I measure my icing, and I get the perfect consistency by using a large ice cream scoop. I take my one large ice cream scoop and add in one teaspoon of water. So for every ice cream scoop, one teaspoon makes it what we call flood consistency. And flood consistency is perfect for making those beautiful cookies that you see in all the Facebook decorating videos and all the YouTube videos where they have that kind of runny icing but the mistake that a lot of people make often is um, making it too runny. And then it runs off the side of your cookie and onto your countertop and makes a mess. This method that I use makes it a little bit thicker and it works every time. Um, it may vary just a little bit depending on the humidity in your area. But what you want to see is icing that looks like this. And when you bring it up and let a little bit fall down. Count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. When you get to twenty, your little blob should look like it's pretty much reabsorbed back into your icing. And if it's done that, that means that it's perfect twenty second consistency icing. So you can take a tipless piping bag. These are different from disposable piping bags. Learn that the hard way. <laughs> disposable piping bags are great for when you're doing like the really pretty butter creams that people do on cakes and you're adding one of those piping tips um, that people use when they're decorating cakes. If you're decorating cakes or you're using buttercream icing, then a disposable piping bag is perfect. You can put your chip and your coupler and all that good stuff, and it's perfect. And you can decorate cookies with a, um, sorry, I'm going to look at y'all the top. You can decorate cookies with a popping tip, one of those metal tips that you attach to the end of a disposable bag, and that's perfectly fine. But this makes life so much easier because when you're decorating cookies, you have so many different colors. Y'all see me post my color palettes on Instagram stories a lot. I'll lay out all the icings that I've made for the week and it ends up being like five or six bags and I don't want to do a tip and a coupler and a coupler and a tip for all those different bags. These tipless piping bags make your world a lot, a lot simpler. So I'm going to show you how I seal this up. I'll be right back. I thought I had everything ready over here today, but I knew I would be forgetting something. You can buy an automatic bag sealer on Amazon. I think these are for technically for meat producers and people who are packing like huge quantities of things. But you just slip your bag through there and it ties it automatically with this neat little piece of tape that almost looks like a Twix tie. I love it. I think it's so cute. So real quick. Before we really get into the decorating part of this video, I want to tell you, make sure that you've signed up for the giveaway for our um, little birdhouse cookie. Um, that's going to be announced tomorrow. And also, um, make sure that you share it and um, like 
the Sarah Grace Cookie Company page if you want to be entered into that giveaway. And so now we'll go ahead and get into the actual cookie decorating. And to do that, I'm going to point my phone down a little bit so that y'all can see a little better. Okay. Can y'all see the table now? Perfect. Yay. All right. I'm gonna scooch this stuff over. And I'm gonna make sure you can see. If you can see okay, drop me a comment below and tell me that you can see. Awesome. Okay. So, I have my tipless piping bag here. This is a blank square cookie. And I'm gonna take my tipless bag and smooth it out where the seam of the bag is. If you've ever been to a cookie decorating class with me, this is where you spend a little bit of time and camp out and talk because this is super important. With these bags, if you cut straight across this seam, you will get a perfect, smooth, even circle every time. And so I'm going to flood my cookie. Flooding is when you just fill it in. Someone asked me what flooding is the other day. When you're decorating cookies, there's piping and there's flooding. What I'm doing around the edge of this cookie right now, that's piping. You're piping your line, you're going all the way around, you're making this border, and you're making a little dam. I've heard of people calling it damming and flooding cookies. Um, I was raised free will Baptist and very conservative, so I feel like my granny's gonna get me for saying that, so I just say popping and flooding. <laughs> so I go all the way around, and now, after I've created that border by popping, I'm going back around, and I'm increasing my pressure on the popping bag. So I wasn't squeezing much at first, but now that I'm going back around, I'm gonna squeeze really, really, really hard, and it's gonna make a lot of icing come out. And that's when it's gonna start flowing together like you've seen it do on some of the cookie decorating videos that you've watched. This is the, what do they call it on YouTube? Most satisfying videos. This is the satisfying part when it all kind of comes together. And this 20 second icing that I showed you how to make with the ice cream scoop and the one teaspoon of water, this is perfect to use for piping and flooding. Some people prefer to use a stiffer consistency on the outside and a thinner consistency on the inside, or there are a million different variations of how you can do it out there, but there are some who do two different piping bags to go around the edge and then to go in the middle. Mama ain't got time for that, so. I use 20 second, it's perfect consistency for both. You only have to fill up one piping bag. Now, when I'm going back and doing details, of course, I add, I do different consistencies. Hey, Autumn. Hey, Karen. I do different consistencies when I'm going back and adding details, but other than that, you really don't need it to be different consistencies. Okay, so that is our background, I like to call it, our first layer. And I have a cookie over here that's ready to go. This has had 24 hours to dry. This is hard. It's not gonna fall through when you poke it. Don't just like mash on it hard or anything because it will break. But when you're about to paint a cookie like we're gonna do with um, food coloring and lemon juice, you want to make sure that it's completely dry. You don't wanna have even a little bit of moisture underneath the surface because It'll be really hard to paint, paint and it might break when you press your brush into it. So, I've got a little jar of water here beside me. I've got a paper towel. And I've got some lemon extract. Now, lemon extract is not the same as lemon juice. Someone asked me the other day, is this the same as lemon juice? It is not. If you use lemon juice, I feel like it would probably work, but I think it would give you the same problem that you have when you're using water to 
put your icing on your cookie. And when you use water, see this icing is made out of water. So when you use water, it kind of breaks down the icing and you'll have little tiny holes all in your icing. But when you use lemon extract, it has alcohol in it. It has 84% alcohol actually. And so that won't give you the little tiny holes that you see in cookies sometimes if someone uses water. Now, to get the watercolor flower effect, I've mixed just a very, very tiny bit of gel food coloring into my lemon extract. I put the lemon extract in um, one of the wells of this paint palette that I had filled up yesterday. Um, I had filled it up with a gray color and I was making the little birds that I showed y'all um, on my Facebook page. But you need to make sure that you have mostly lemon extract and not a lot of gel food coloring or it'll make your um, colors really, really bright and dark. So I'm taking my gel food coloring and lemon extract mixture and I'm gonna start at the corner of this square and I'm gonna start making like some kind of rough petal shapes. I just thought this was the prettiest bluish color yesterday. I never dreamed that, I was actually trying to get gray again when I was making my birds, but I realized that my gray was not gonna mix back up to be gray. It had already kind of separated, but it made this gorgeous blue color, so I'm not complaining. I'm starting with just a few rough petal shapes around the edge, and you can see how when you just touch it lightly to the icing, it kind of spreads. So you just kind of touch it and pull it, touch it and pull it, touch it and pull it, and you're gonna get those rough little petal shapes. With watercolor, you don't want it to be too perfect. You don't have to stress about it looking just right. So I'm gonna rinse in my water with my brush and then dry it off on a paper towel so that we don't have a bunch of water coming in. Give it a little blow right quick. Kind of help that along in the drying process. And then I'm gonna go back in with my food coloring and I like to kind of find the in-between in between points of the petals that I've already made and make some additional petals there. But as you layer these colors on, it's gonna make it look like your flowers have more dimension. And you're not doing anything, you're not changing colors, you're not going out of your way to make it look so three-dimensional. You're just doing the exact same thing that you did a minute ago and this lemon extract and gel food coloring kind of does the work for you. Here we go. And so you can see that's already starting to look like a second layer of petals. And as we keep on layering and keep on layering, that's gonna keep on looking like more and more petals and it's gonna look like a very three-dimensional fluffy flower by the time you get done. Hey, Jessalyn. And so I'm gonna keep on layering here and I like to typically give it just a little bit more time between petals to dry. So I have one finished over here that I did earlier, specifically for this. Can y'all see that okay? Okay. This has already got a few layers on for the flowers. And I'm gonna keep adding a few. So I'm gonna add a few more layers in here. And this color is just slightly different than the one I was using yesterday. So it looks just a little darker. That's okay though. I kinda like the look it gives it. do just a few extra um, on the sides to make it look like those petals are coming in from a different direction. I think it's really pretty. Hey Angie. Right, I am rinsing my brush with water again and wiping it off on the paper towel. Then I'm going to go back in with my lemon extract and food coloring. And I had some green in my palette again from yesterday where I was doing that birdhouse. Um, 
And a good tip here, if you are using green in your cookies, but you don't want to have that bright, like, sugary Jolly Rancher green, mix up some yellow gel food coloring and some black gel food coloring, and it'll give you a much more subtle woodsy green that's more of like a, I call it a Bob Ross green. It's not really the bright Crayola green. And to get these leaf shapes, I'm starting with my brush and pressing down, then pulling up. And then I like to come around again to really give it that watercolor look, like your brush has missed a spot. Um, kind of leave an open area here. I'm intentionally trying to make this look like someone has taken a set of watercolors and painted a cookie, except with food color. <laughs> And I like to kind of straighten those out after they get done. Just go back and add color anywhere you think it would be pretty. And then I'm going to add just a little bit here in the center to make this look more flower-like. Make it look like the stamen of the flower. Okay, and that's our flower pattern. I've got one finished that I did yesterday, and we're ready to put our verse on the cookie. So I'm gonna turn it like a triangle. Well, not like a triangle, I guess like a diamond. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it this way, and I'm gonna put our words this way onto the cookie. And a lot of people ask me how I do the writing on the cookies. Um, typically, I use a projector. This is my projector that I use. It's called an Idea Pico. It's a little tiny projector. And I'm going to show you exactly how I write on cookies with this projector. Okay. Here we go. We've got our little picture coming up here. And this is just a handheld wireless projector. I'm gonna select um, Mac setup. And then I'm gonna grab my iPad. I'll move this cookie so y'all can see what I'm doing on the iPad. Grab my iPad. And I'm gonna mirror the screen. And it should pop up, hopefully, it probably won't today since I need it to. <laughs> Maybe it will. But it should pop up and say Idea Pico here in just a minute. And while we're waiting on that, I'll show you. I've gone to Procreate. I have a software on my iPad that I use for drawing and writing and designing cookies. And I've already written out the verse that I'm making on this cookie today. For I know the plans I have for you. I'm just doing a little snippet of that verse, Jeremiah 29 11, um, because I want it to fit on the cookie. This little program is so fun to play around with, Procreate. Drop me a heart emoji if you've ever used Procreate before. And drop me a smiley face emoji if you want to try Procreate. Okay. So now, I have my projector set up and ready to go. And I have my display here. And it's just a little bit low for me, so I'm going to pull it up. Now I can see my words that I'm going to be writing. Sorry. I know that's probably hard to see for y'all. Okay. And I just place my cookie on the projection and change the size of the projection based on the size of the cookie. And I kind of line it up there. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab my edible ink pen. So 
So I bought this edible ink pen on Amazon. It's really handy for doing hand lettering and things like that. So I'm gonna take the really skinny side. There's a skinny side and a brush writing side. And I'm gonna take the skinny side to do these smaller words here at the top. For I know, or rather for I. And then I'm gonna take the brush side to do no. And I'm gonna start with the skinny side and then switch to the larger side. And I'm just filling out words here. Sometimes I do use icing for this. Today I'm using a marker just because it's a little easier to deal with on camera. But if you want to use an icing for this, just know that when you're going on the upstroke and you're making those thin pieces of the letters, that's when you're going to use a very light hand to squeeze your icing bag. Just make it kind of light and um, not much pressure. But when you're going on these down strokes that I'm doing right now in this O, you're going to squeeze, 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 and that will make your icing come out in more quantity so that you'll have those thicker pieces on the down stroke that'll look like hand lettering. When you're learning to hand letter, um, I did a couple classes on Skillshare about hand lettering. That's what they talk about. That's the main tenant of hand lettering is going thicker on the down stroke, stroke, thinner on the up stroke like this. And it's the same way with cookies. So there's the main word. Oh, I'm sorry guys. Shaking it all over the place. And then I'm going to continue down here where it says the plans I have for you with the smaller, more thin side of the marker. I love this font. Um, Procreate has a feature where you can import any font that you want into that software. And then I can put it on a cookie. So if you have a cookie you want me to make and you have a certain font that you need it to be, if you know the name of that font or I can download it from Daw Font or you can send it to me, um, I can put it on a cookie. Alright, for I know the plans I have for you. And I'm debating on if I should put um, the verse here. I had it on the projection, but I don't know. Should I put the verse on it or should I just leave it as is? Drop me a comment and let me know what you think. Should I add Jeremiah 29 11 to it? Or just leave it as is? how it is I think I might put that in the description when I post it Jeremiah 29 11 okay I'm gonna bring y'all back up for a minute hey let me know what you thought of that in the comments tell me if you think that looked fun or if you think I have people tell me all the time oh there's no way I could do that and then I have some people who say oh, I saw a cookie. That's how I got started in cookies. I saw a cookie on Facebook and I thought, hmm, I think I might be able to do that. I thought it's probably just gel food coloring. Um, and I had a little bit of experience with cake decorating, so I got really excited about cookies. But that's the finished product for today. I know it's backwards. I'll post it on Instagram or um, on Facebook later today and you can check out what it looks like um, turned around the right way. <laughs> And this is what those flowers look like before we added the words. I thought those turned out really pretty. Um, real quick, make sure you've entered the Facebook giveaway for the birdhouse. Um, that'll be announced tomorrow afternoon. I'll draw a name and tell y'all who that's going to be. And Mother's Day is coming up. I believe that's Sunday the... Somebody, 
Somebody help me in the comments. <laughs> I've got my iPad right here. I can look. Sunday, the something of May, is Mother's Day. I think that's like a week or two weeks from now. And I'm planning on doing a pop-up shop for that. So, normally I would take orders for cookies. I would send y'all um, on Facebook or in an email the pictures of the sets that I want to do for Mother's Day. But this year instead, I thought with everything being crazy and we're kind of starting to get kind of starting to learn that we're going to be able to be out of quarantine or starting to be out of quarantine on May 1st if what if I understood Governor Lee correctly um we should be starting to kind of ease out of quarantine by May the 10th um or by May the 1st and so next week after next on Tuesday the 5th I'm going to try and host a Mother's Day pop-up porch porch pop-up where I'll make a bunch of cookies I'll have tons of Mother's Day options like the bouquets that I did for Valentine's Day I'll do um, like the little box sets I've got some cutters ordered that are so cute y'all they say mom and it's in little flower pots and the part that says mom is cactuses so on those little box sets it can be a little cactus that says mom or I've got some floral ones ordered too that say mom I'll see if I can find that for y'all on Etsy um, and send it to you out on Facebook today but they are so so cute I'm so excited about those cutters that I've ordered and how they're gonna look for y'all um, I'll have like some normally I do like five dollar options fifteen dollar options twenty to thirty dollar options so I'll have like each price range so if you want to get your main Mother's Day present for your mom here at the porch pop-up that day, you can get your main Mother's Day present or um, you can add like a supplemental Mother's Day present. Um, so like if you, I always buy my mom a, like a flower or something. So if you want to get your mom something and then add on a cookie as like a little, I always need just a little something extra um, so that I don't feel like I'm just getting her one thing. <laughs> I always like to get her a little something extra just to like a snack or a cookie or something is perfect so I'll have some options like that or you can get your main gift and you can get one of the big cookie bouquets or something like that and I'll give you some logistics and some more things um, that you can do before then hey April I'm glad to see you that's okay girl we all get busy <laughs> hey candy um, but yeah so y'all tune in um, week after next I'll be posting some porch pop-up options for Mother's Day and you can come down to my house check them out if you see something on Facebook or Instagram that you like and you live in Florence message me and we'll try and figure it out um, but yeah we'll make it work let's see Mother's Day giveaway I think that's it I am gonna start accepting custom orders now I've had several people messaging me now that we're finding out we're going to be out of quarantine soon um, people asking if I'm going to do custom orders again and I am um, the thing is I'm already booked for next week the following week and the week after that is my first week that I'm free May 11th so if you want to get on the calendar unless you were an existing order if I had you on the calendar before and you message me and let me know when you're moving to or let me know that you are moving then I've got you on my calendar and you're good but if you um, are a new order if you didn't have anything on my books before the quarantine started before COVID and all that hit then make sure you message me as soon as you know the date of your party as soon as you know that you're having a party and just say I want to get on your books um, that way I don't have to turn down an order because I've already had to turn down see three orders this week because I was booked and it breaks my heart y'all because I hate turning people down and I'm you know with me being in my home kitchen and having my babies I can do a lot because my uh, mother-in-law keep miles and Noah for me but there's only so many I can do in my home kitchen in a week so I have to kind of limit them to make sure that they come out looking beautiful when I do do them so if y'all let me know as soon as you can if you need um, cookies for an event or a gathering or even just a special occasion let me know like I said Mother's Day pop-up will be coming I'll announce those um, cookies on Facebook soon and I'll send an email um, 
Also, if you want my cookie recipe, that was another thing I was going to show y'all. I put my cookie recipe on my website, saragracecookieco.com. It's on my website. You go, there's a little line of tabs over on the side, and one of them says my recipe. You click that, and you can download these cute little cards that have the cookie recipe on one card, and then on another card, there's the icing recipe, and it tells you step by step how to make those cookies and how to make the icing. And you can follow along with me next Friday when I come and do a decorate with me. So, if y'all have any questions or anything you'd like to see next week, um, I've kind of been coming up with a theme um, of each week and sending out on stories asking you what you'd like to see. But if you can think of something and you want to see me decorate a certain kind of cookie or a certain design, I would love it if you would send me a message, drop me a comment, tell me what you want to see. Um, and I was just going to run by y'all too. I thought about doing a pin with me. I know we all find lots of cute cookie ideas on Pinterest. We find all the cute ideas on Pinterest. Um, I really like the pin with me um, that, that, that I see on YouTube. And I haven't done one as a cookier before. I haven't seen a cookier do a pin with me before. I thought we would just look up, say, like Mother's Day cookie ideas or graduation cookie ideas. And I could, you can screen share on Facebook and I can show you my Pinterest account where I could go through and pin certain ones. And y'all can tell me what you really like. Probably graduation cookies would be what we need to do that for. That way I can make cookies that I know y'all are interested in and that you'll really like when you get them. So if you like that idea, if you like the idea of a pin with me, let me know. If you would rather see a decorating video, let me know that too. If you think, mm, pin with me, that doesn't really sound like something. What? I'd rather just get on Pinterest myself. Let me know that too. I'm open to all feedback. <laughs> okay, thank y'all again for joining me today. I had a lot of fun. Y'all have a great day. Bye.